What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my man, Gaeta Brian. We got my man, DMV, back there. We got David Wiley. Um, I, I would say he's, we're, we're rolling down the street. We're not smoking Indo, <coughs> but he might be jip, <laughs> drinking on the juice. Some, I don't know. Some kind of juice. Okay. <laughs> nah, jokes aside, we, we, we've had fun. We have been in the car now for 11 hours. We have gone about... 680 miles of driving. We are only 409 miles away from Kansas City. We're actually making much, much better time than we thought we were going to be doing. You know, we were like, uh, maybe we'll be there in the morning because by the time we stop and eat and do this, that, and and, and unfortunately, you know, we, we wanted to stop off and get game, you know, uh, a big game, James. I, we, we we said we were ready. Look, James, you could have been here with us, brother. You, brother, you could have been in here with us. And, and you know, uh, just hanging and talking, draft and everything else. My man DMV has got his top 100 list, and we were going through that earlier today. He's had actually his mock draft, his latest mock draft. How many mock drafts have you done? Uh, like like uh, four, four, five. Only four? Some of these mother humpers have done like 70 of them. Yeah, on my channel, uh, I think this is the fourth one. Fourth one. All right. But he guarantees you the Cowboys will get a great draft pick in the first round. How about the second round? I can't guarantee that. Yeah, especially with their uh, history with second yeah. round picks. Our history with second but round But you know what? This is the year that the second round pick will be great because we're in an alternate universe. I'm telling you, we're in an alternate universe because we've got the Cowboys already make some good off-season moves. Okay, they, I'm, I'm telling you, this year is different. And just like my man Simus, and Simus, we got to do some more work again, bro. Because you know, I, you know, I can picture you hanging out, like you and I sitting on the front porch, you know, with some Long Island iced teas, reminiscing about the great days of the Dallas Cowboys and how they get back to that again. <clears throat> but he was the one that kind of said, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. And kind of, I said this too, because break my sick of life, that it felt like the Cowboys were literally setting up for failure for Mike McCarthy to get Sean Payton and to clear cap space. The Cowboys last year felt like they were a seller as opposed to a buyer. The Eagles, they were a buyer and they almost bought a Super Bowl. They almost, except for that loser game in the Super Bowl. We looked like the team that was trying to rebuild. Am I, am I lying about that, guys? Didn't that feel like it? Yeah. When you got rid of, it looked like we were dumping salaries. We got rid of Mari Cooper. We got All your rid of weapons Lyons. were gone. Yeah. And we started the season with one guy that had a touchdown reception as far as wide receivers. I'm sorry. That is not a Super Bowl team. I still say they overachieved. But I thought, or as Simon said, that the Cowboys were looking at that as the red shirt year to build for them to be in the Super Bowl in Vegas because Jerry Jones was instrumental with Vegas getting a football team. It's kind of interesting though, don't you think? And you look at the moves that they've made right now. Now again, there's no guarantee that they're gonna work out, but you look at the moves that they've made, you gotta say that this is a much better team right now than they were last year. And going into the draft, there's not the holes that we had last year you got to feel good you got you, you don't, don't feel bad don't feel bad don't let the eagle fans make you feel bad so anybody else got anything to add to that we've been through six states today we just saw lucas oil stadium while we were live streaming uh, my man game time brian has been working the hell out of that steering wheel Working the hell working, out of it. That's what they said in the comments. He's man, Brian. He's been working the hell out of it. I'm like, well, what about this brother here? You know, I was working the steering wheel too. I'm about to get back on the steering wheel here when game time gets tired. He's literally just got the shit shocked out of him by a traffic cone. Scared the hell out of me, people. I ain't gonna lie. We, we got on the street. It was one of them big ass. They, they, the, the big, uh, yeah, big the big ass. barrel cones. And the guys out there, he's he's literally, you know, he's saying, "I'm sick of these damn barrels," because he slammed that sucker down right in front of Brian. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was like dunk. And Brian's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a cone flash. Back. I did, I did. I got PSD from the cone. Oh, man. So, it's 7.55. We've gone past Indianapolis. We've been through Indiana. Well, we're still in Indiana. And we're hoping that the time zone changes once we get into Illinois. We've been through Ohio. And Big Game James had the opportunity to hop on with us. But if you're scared, say you're scared, Big Game. 
Um, been through Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia, and you started out in Pennsylvania, didn't you? Or did Jersey? Did you, uh, did you do Jersey? I did Jersey. He did Jersey. Of, uh, <laughs> Springfield. Okay. Three yeah. Hours and fifteen minutes. So that's seven. How many days? Look, we just saw a tenth of the country this this trip. A tenth of the country. Where else can you get that but the Joe Blue Sports Report? Look at this. And there, the sun is going bye bye. It really is a perfect day to drive. Oh, this has been good. No rain, no wind. Uh, the traffic hasn't been bad at all. No. Um, where have we, we hit traffic for like? Two seconds. Yeah, it wasn't much. Just leaving where you're at. And... Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> leaving the DC area is where the traffic was. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What a way to end the day. Uh, with 403 miles to go. It's actually been a very peaceful trip. It's been a high. It's been a very high energy trip on that one too. All right, good people. We shall see you. I don't know if we live stream. You ain't going to be able to see us because there ain't no light in here. But uh, we'll give you updates on where we at and what we doing. Appreciate all of you guys following along. Make sure you, you hit the like button. You check out and subscribe to my man, Game Time Brian. He's a road warrior. Make sure DMV, DMV has put in so much incredible work. I remember... When I first met Clarence, and Clarence actually scared me in front of the post office too. Clarence rolled up on me. It's like, you're my nose. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe. He's like, I can't believe I'm running into you. But he was the one who told me about DMV. He said, man, you gotta have this guy DMV, man. He knows his shit when it comes to the trap, man. He does the work. And so I said, okay, okay, I got you, man. He scared me like that traffic cone did. I'm telling you, because look, because Clint, you, you, I mean, he's like David Wiley. He's been, you get a guy in a big SUV that rolls up on you that's that big and says, you're my nose, and you might think they're an Eagle fan. So definitely check out my man, DMV, because they also put in the 80s rap music too. And don't forget, prime time Phil, because he's flying to Kansas City, okay? You know, say, they, the, the song goes, it might take a train, I might take a plane. Well, Phil, he took the plane. We didn't take the train. We just drove, because we damn sure weren't going to walk to Kansas City. That's too far. And then you got David Wiley, who's back there with the juice. I'm Mark Holmes, and we're going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here we come. Peace.